We have a quick demo here on how to single sign on to the advanced authentication enrollment page using the Access Manager product from NetIQ. There are two steps to do here. One is to make changes on the advanced authentication side, and the second stage is to make the corresponding changes on the NAM side. If we look at the advanced authentication side to start off with, there are two, cha two changes to be made here. The first one is we need to make sure that an authentication management chain exists using the LDAP password method, and we assign that to all users in the group. Make sure it's enabled, obviously, by default. If it's not, it's not going to work. The second step on the advanced authentication side is to go to the events, select the authenticators management event, and make sure that A, the chains that we selected in the previous step are enabled. And most importantly, if you drop down here, there is an allow basic authentication flag, which is disabled by default. What we need to do is we need to enable it. When we enable it, any requests going into the account basic URL will actually have a pop-up. We'll have a basic authentication pop-up. So here's an example. I'm going to go straight there and I got my 401 pop-up. So literally that's all we need to do on the advanced authentication side. On the NAM side, there is a few steps to do. Um, the first one is we need to go into the virtual attribute. So you go to the IDP server, identity server, go to the shared settings, virtual attributes, and in there, we're going to create a new virtual attribute. I've just called it VNAF user. And in here, we're going to take as an, as an in, in, uh, input, the parameter P1, which is going to correspond to the user CN. So when control is passed into this particular uh, virtual attribute code, we're going to pass in the CN and we're going to take the CN, in this case here, for example, ncashel, and we're going to append the string colon LDAP password in uppercase colon one. So that's the first step. The second step then is we go to our policy and we're going to create a policy, an identity injection policy. And within the identity injection policy, we're going to inject two things. We're going to inject into the authentication header. The username will be the virtual attribute that we populated in the previous step here. That's the VNAF user. And the second uh, parameter to pass into the auth header is the user's password. So I'm going to put in the password here associated with the, the user session when logging into the IDP server. The second stage then is to go to the proxy service that we're using to accelerate the NAF enrollment page. And I've just created a domain-based multi-homed proxy down here, this, this one here. And this is accelerating my NAF server here on 32.3. I've created one protected resource where I have defined that the user needs to authenticate using secure name password. And most importantly, we're going to enable the identity injection policy. The identity injection policy is going to take the username and the, pa and the uh, password and add it to the authorization header that we'll send to the back end. So once we've applied those change changes, we can simply come up to a browser and we can go to our um, we, well, we can we can log into any uh, access manager protected as a resource to start off with. For example, let's say I'm I'm logged into the network here and I'm just browsing around. I'll log in as Ncashel OL, and that will get me in and I'll access that particular application. And now what I want to do is I want to go to my enrollment page. So I go to the account basic URL that I've defined in here, and hopefully I'm single signed on to the back end. Thank you. Thank you.